Hey guys, welcome back. It's Jen. And today I'm going to be telling you six secrets to using molds for decorating your cakes and sweets. After watching this video, you'll be able to use molds like a pro for fondant, but you can also apply these secrets to gum paste, modeling chocolate, marzipan. I love marzipan. It is so good. If you haven't tried it yet, you should definitely try it. Here's the tools I used in this video if you want to take a quick screenshot of this. And you can get any silicone molds you'd like, just make sure they're food grade. You can find these molds at craft stores and then I got my mermaid tail on Amazon. The first thing I'm going to show you how to do is color your fondant. So here we are already at secret number one. Take a small piece of fondant and color that to the color you see on the bottle of your icing color. Even if you're doing a lighter version of the color you choose, still darken it to the same color on the bottle. And then we're going to take little pieces of that small piece of colored fondant at a time and we're going to mix that into our big piece of fondant. This will go a lot faster because it's easier to mix fondant together than it is to mix icing color with fondant. So even if you want your fondant to be the same color as the gel color, just oversaturate that small ball of fondant so that you have extra icing color to color your big ball of fondant. And you can always just add more icing color if you need it. Your fondant's going to be a little hard at first, but as you mix in the color, it'll naturally soften it up. So you're just going to knead it, stretch it. I use the color teal here, by the way. Okay, so secret number two. If the fondant is sticking to your hands, use a little vegetable shortening and just kind of rub it on your hands like lotion and it won't stick to you anymore. This also moistens the fondant so it won't dry out as fast while you're working with it. Okay, now go ahead and grab your mold and just make sure you have a big enough ball of fondant that will fill the entire mold. All right, that brings us to secret number three, cornstarch. You're going to want to dust your molds with cornstarch so they actually come out of the mold. We don't want too much on there, so I dust it and then I flip it over and knock it against the counter a couple times uh, to get the excess out. All right, then roll your fondant into a ball and put it in the biggest section of your mold. And then spread it out until it covers the entire mold. Now something to be aware of here is weak points. So in this mermaid tail mold, for example, the narrowest point is going to be your weakest point. We really want to make sure we fill that part completely full the first time we put the fondant in because we don't want to have to be adding any fondant on top of it because it'll be the strongest if it's in just one piece of fondant. So fill up that mold with that one piece, just spreading it out. If you didn't have enough fondant to spread it through the whole mold, I would just start over with more fondant instead of adding more on top. And then just work on stripping the excess fondant away until it's flush with the mold. And I just do this by scraping it off with my fingers. And then when I'm close to the end, I like to roll over the fondant with a roller. It's not necessary, especially if you're not going to see the back, but it's just a little trick if you want it to be smooth. And if you look up at the upper left hand corner, you see that I'm filling in these smaller molds. These can be more tricky because they're so teeny and delicate. With these, you really have to make sure that you have enough fondant in those little pieces because we need them as strong as possible. But the same thing here is just making sure the fondant is flush with the mold. Number four, once all the fondant is flush with the mold, you're actually going to want to switch directions and you're going to want to push the fondant a little bit inward from the edge of the mold so you see a little space between the edge of the mold and the fondant. We do this so the mold comes out easier. 
And also so you don't have to trim extra pieces of fondant that are hanging off the edge of the mold after you take it out. Number five is a little different depending on if your mold is more flexible or less flexible. So for the less flexible mold, you're going to want to tip it upside down, see what falls out. And then if there's more molds in there, I kind of get more violent with it. <laughs> and I really just smack it against the countertop. And eventually you'll get all the molds out, even the stubborn ones. <laughs> and with the more flexible molds, with these it's a little different. You just turn them upside down and you kind of just peel it off and let the mold fall out. But make sure you start at the most delicate part of the mold. And last but not least, number six, let the fondant dry and don't pick it up until it's completely dry. It's at its most delicate state when it's halfway dry because it's not flexible anymore, but it's not hard yet. So this is when it's gonna break. Especially with this mermaid tail, it is so thin at that one part and has to hold up so much weight. This piece of foam will help it dry faster. And I would let these dry at least overnight, but it'll depend on where you live, how humid or dry it is, how long it will take. You can touch it before it's dry, just don't pick it up or move it around. And also the thicker the mold is, the longer it will take to dry. And then also a quick note here, if you're gonna be putting your mold on top of the cake, sticking up independently and not like laying against the cake, marzipan will not work for this. It never completely hardens, so eventually gravity will, it'll slowly start to droop. Another note here too is don't try to use candy melts for molds that are meant for fondant because you're gonna need to flex the mold in order to get them out and that will in turn crack it. So if you wanna use candy melts, I would get molds that are specifically made for candy. In order for these to dry, you have to leave them out exposed to the air. But as soon as they are completely dry, you can wrap them in plastic wrap and then put them in an airtight container so they stay fresh and you can actually make these up to a month ahead of time. So that is it, you guys. You now know the secrets to using molds. You don't have to practice. It's as easy as using Play-Doh. And this will totally up your cake game. Molds? I didn't use molds. I completely hand sculpted each piece. <laughs> if you want to learn more cake decorating skills, decorate other fun sweets, learn some new recipes, and all other types of baking stuff, Start now by subscribing and clicking the bell. Thank you guys so much for watching and can't wait to see you next time.